a very underrated Chicago Blackhawks prospect, has been putting up some incredible numbers this year in the OHL. And according to multiple rankings on this Blackhawks prospects, he's very underrated and very low compared to some of the top talent that this team possesses. But we're also going to be talking about in this video, Connor Bedard's return to the league after his jaw surgery, as well as just some tidbits on the game that are going to be a very big topic of conversation for a few days to come. But before we get into all of this news here, we know that 83% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. So if you're looking for a spot to get all your Blackhawks news as it happens, reports, trades, rumors, signings, you're in the right spot. Make sure to hit that sub button. Join us along the journey to hopefully Macklin Celebrini. But like I said, we're going to start this one off here with the sneaky prospect. He's been putting in work. Now, there may be a few diehard people who know this prospect, but for the average viewer, you probably don't. This guy is Paul Ludwinski, and you can see by his stats, he's been very consistent with the Kingston Frontenacs over the past few seasons. Now, we know the CHL. The numbers are a bit inflated there, so 42 points in 43 games may not seem that good compared to some other players. But when real in reality, you know, this is some very good stats, some very promising stats and consistency from a player in Paul Ludwinski who on many rankings, is being labeled as a chance to make the NHL or a low chance to make the NHL. But with these numbers and this consistency, things may have to change. You know, he's been putting up some fantastic plays, as, you know, some highlight reel plays as well in the Kingston. But he's also on the rankings or the stats for the in-the-system players, the Blackhawks. You can see he's right below Gavin Hayes. And you can see that with Gavin Hayes, being one of the top prospects on this team, he's only four points below with three more games played. But, you know, the point per game as well, the games played, the goals and assists, you know, he's a very good playmaker. We've seen some incredible plays from him uh, on a highlight reel. I can't post them here, unfortunately, due to copyright issues, but it's a very interesting one to watch going over these next, uh, you know, next season and the season after just to see where he ends up, what he does, and what kind of consistency will come out of him because we know the Blackhawks, their prospect pool is very good. It's very big as well, and they're going to be increasing that in this year's draft as well with the pick they're going to have. So it could be either a trade piece. It could be, you know, a, a, a potential long shot for the NHL. Could be a bottom 6-4 to start off, but he's an interesting to watch, one to watch, and I really think that he has a good chance, some great possibilities of becoming something on this Blackhawks team, but, you know, they're still only early yet, and the Blackhawks have so many options. So you don't want to assume anything too quick. You don't want to assume anything, you know, too early and everything like that. Because you can see here, he's all there with some of the top prospects on this team and Oliver Moore, Frank Nazar, you know, as well as some players in the AHL. But we're going to be talking about the prospects in this one. Landon Slager, Ryan Green, some of the top prospects, some of the top names in this, uh, in this system. So something to watch. And really in my mind that he could be something watching some of his plays watching his highlights and watching Kingston play, he's something to watch. And I can guarantee you we will be coming up against his name uh, again in the future. But now we need to move on to the game here. There's a lot of things to talk about. This game was something. You know, that's the best way to describe it. Uh, Bedard, obviously you've seen a bit of rust there in the first period coming out of this. You know, he obviously hadn't practiced before this with the team. So you can't really blame him. But after that, you could see he heated up as well as Philip Kurashev, that he needed Bedard on his wing to get back to what he was because these two played absolutely fantastic together here in this game. I'll pull up the lines of... Oh, wrong screenshot. Sorry. We'll pull up the lines here. Nick Foligno, Connor Bedard, and uh, Philip Kurashev. That line tonight was excellent. They were, they were flying, but that was really about it on the offensive side of the puck uh, for the offense. You know, Kurashev... Like I said, it was a very good addition. He seemed like he was back to normal, more comfortable with Bedard on his wing, especially on the goal that they scored. What a pass by Bedard to Kurashev, who just slotted that in the net. But apart from that, like I said, not much offense coming out of these guys, but the defense was also not great. I'll say that, you know, the game didn't look like a 4-1 to one game. It doesn't seem like a 4-1 to one game uh, watching it. Obviously, one of the ones was an empty netter with two goals coming from Crosby, two very nice goals coming from Sidney Crosby, just showing he's still one of the top players in the league. But uh, on the topic of the goals, I got to say, Arvin Soderblom, he looked pretty good tonight. You know, obviously, he's been struggling a lot for the past three months. He has not a win in just about three months, which is something that, you know, you always, you're always thinking of when you're in the net there, when you're on the bench, wherever you are. You're always thinking that you haven't had a win in a long time. Now, I'm not going to look at the win-loss record for Arvin Soderblom as well, but just because of this team. 
we know that this team isn't enough to hold this, hold the win together, hold a loss together. Uh, apart from Peter Morazic, he's been one of the guys who's been able to get a win himself along with another guy like Jason Dickinson playing well or Connor Bedard playing well. But, you know, Peter Morazic has been a very good this even season, playing a lot of the games. Arvid Soderblom hasn't really, but he's made some really nice saves this game. He's made some uh, nice reflex saves, I guess you could say, going across the net into the splits uh, on wraparounds and everything. I think this was a really good potential game uh, for him. I think this is something that you're going to want to go off of, take this into your next game, into practice, saying that, you know, it was a better game than what it looked like on paper, but obviously still lots of room to develop, lots of time to develop, so Arvid Soderblom got to keep his head up. He's he's good, very good potential goalie. It just does suck the situation the Blackhawks are in right now, leading him to all of this, but you probably seen the screenshot I pulled up by our own accent, and uh, probably wondering what those two very big lines going left were on that chart, and I, I'll, that right there is Seth Jones and Alex Flass. Like, these two, this pairing tonight, had a very, very tough game. I think that everybody could see that from this chart. But Seth Jones is one I want to talk about, and one guy that we seem to talk about a lot. Uh, this game, one thing that first came to my mind was he had a three-and-a-half-minute shift in the third period. You don't do that while you're losing. You can't do that while you're losing. I understand he's probably one of the more notable names. Notice I didn't say best because this year... Alex Vlasic has been the best defenseman on this team. He's been uh, struggling this year, offense, defense, bit everything Seth Jones has, but, you know, a three-minute-and-a-half shift, losing 4-1, to one, where you kind of want to get fresh feet out there whenever you can to go and try and swing the momentum in your way heading to the end of the game. Uh, that's You can't do that. You know, he was gassed out there. Obviously, I understand they were in, the, their, own zen, in their own own in, own end sorry uh, for the majority of that time, but... You could definitely just try and get out as soon as possible. The puck is close to the blue line. Hop over the bench, get someone else on. Uh, I really didn't like that three and a half minute shift from Seth Jones. You know, the commentators were even noting, noticing uh, a lot of his faults this game, seemingly more than normal. Uh, but also at the end, the empty net goal. You know, I understand that he tried to bat it out of the air, and that's not an easy thing to do. But uh, just throw your hand out and try to catch the puck or something. You know. He was close to it, and he chose to lift a stick up and go like this to try and block the puck. But, you know, I don't know if he was thinking it was going wide. I don't even think he was going over the net. But either way, Seth Jones' effort this game was absolutely poor. It was very, very horrible. And it is something that is not fun to watch, especially being the guy who's making the most money on this team, supposed to be uh, the face of this team before Connor Bedard, when he, they traded for him and everything. But... It's going to be something that is is going to happen with the team being as bad as it is right now, but it's also something that can't continue to happen. Seth Jones cannot be one of the worst players uh, on the on the ice, especially this game. He was the worst player on the ice uh, in on-ice offense and off on-ice defense. So that right there just shows what the, uh, the, the negativity is coming from towards Seth Jones. But Alex Vlasic, this is an anomaly. He's been playing very well this season. Very happy. Uh, seeing him do very good. Obviously, a game like this will happen, especially certain scenarios like this one where you're playing one of the best players of all time in Sidney Crosby. But I want to know what you guys think about, first of all, Paul Ludwinski, as well as then this game. Because this game was something that I think I want to put on the shelf, think about later, because a few ups and downs, but I think a lot of this uh, stuff coming out of this game will work for the future. But let me know what you think. But that's all I got. I'm signing out. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, you want to get all your Blackhawks news, you're in the right spot. Make sure to hit the sub button. But if you did like, enjoy the video as well. Make sure to give it a like. But that's all I got. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great night. See you later.